the purpose of this session is to talk about next steps for XFS online repair. Uh, the, fir the first part of the repair bits are out for review on Dave Chinner's laptop right now, and that means that it's time to start talking about the other missing pieces, which means I'm actually going to talk more about user space today than I would normally would. So the state of things in user space right now is that we have a user space driver program that controls how fast we engage the online FISC mechanism. And that's about it. There's not really anything, we don't really have anything set up right now for what do we do in terms of notifying user space that we've found something weird in the file system. We don't really have any daemon or anything like that monitoring any such notifications to actually issue repair requests other than the general, well, go run the XFS scrub tool without dash N and it will go and fix everything. And, you know, there, and so there's, there's those pieces of where we don't really have any good infrastructure in the kernel to actually handle that sort of thing and figure out what's going on and dispatch all of that. Additionally, there's a, oh, hello. There's a bunch of interesting questions that have come up this afternoon about letting user space mount file systems without privileges. And earlier, Leonard, I think, was talking about some kind of system demount daemon that would run FISC before mounting a file system at the request of some random container that is not itself, you know, root in the root namespace or anything like that. So I figure this sounds like a good time to actually talk about things like that. And of course, the last bit that I wanted to cover today is the actual scrub service itself. Right now, as I mentioned, there's a driver program that you can run from the command line called XFS Scrub. It does all of the like open block devices and the, and the root directory start issuing IOCLs and whatnot. But the real use case for this is not to be running XFS Scrub from the CLI. It's really more to let it run as a background system D service that fires up periodically once a month or whatever you configure it to be. And we'll go and back run in the background. There's there's a few weird problems with this approach. One is that I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm writing a systemd service definition and have no idea if it's actually like useful, safe, non-crazy. I mean systemd analyze says it's fine. So you know, so I guess that's good enough for now. But I was it, the entire thing is you know basically not that far off from the oldie insert cron job, run it in the background, and hope the system administrator is actually watching the system logs. So what I'm interested in is setting up some kind of notification system so that we could actually respond to events dynamically, and also having some means for other applications to do things like invoke a background scrub because, say, there's a, you know, you, you, I, I could envision that you might want to uh, have a like a container host supervisor process that would say, hey, it's pretty quiet on this system right now. Why don't we go kick off a background scrub of all the remaining mounted file systems? Or possibly, I don't know how this fits in with the uh, unprivileged container mounts of XFS use case, but presumably, conceivable, you could mount the file system run and run an online FISC thing before you actually present it to containers or even run it while the containers are running if they're long lived containers, which I don't know. So there, there's a, basically I have a whole bunch of questions about like, does anyone in, on the user space side of things care about these things? And do they have any particular questions or wants or demands or inquiries about any of this? Because I can totally keep going with my kernel colored glasses on, but you not, that doesn't always produce a satisfactory result. So that that's my prompt. And I'm kind of curious, since I can't actually see who else is in the room after the tea break, if anybody in the audience has any questions or thoughts about that. We're going to try to bring Leonard back in, because you didn't put anything in on your title that uh, mentioned this, but uh, we're going to try and call him back. 
the, and the other mm -hmm. thing while we're waiting for him, I would suggest is um, talking to the distro folks because like a lot of the ButterFS related policies around scrubbing and, and that sort of thing were s mostly informed by like Fedora guys, right? So, you know, I have my opinions, you have your opinions, we're kernel guys, we have our opinions, but uh, user space tends to have very different opinions and I, for this sort of thing, for policies, I tend to rely on them, so distro guys for sure is a really good avenue for this. Uh, okay, we have Leonard back in the room, so after that, you wanna yeah, go first, Ted? And then you can repeat your question to Leonard. Uh, yeah, so, mm -hmm. and, and I think the other bit of context when you talked about uh, running running online scrub for untrusted file systems, uh, the specific context there was if the unprivileged, uh, untrusted container uh, admin presents a file system which has deliberate, maliciously constructed file system metadata, we want to make sure that the file system has been checked to be safe to mount. And that the hypothesis is that to the 99th percentile running offline FSCK before the file system is mounted um, might be good enough for at least some file systems because uh, a lot of that depends on the quality of the uh, FSCK for that particular file system. But because the context was, you know, this file system may have a SysBot level inspired malicious metadata where the, the checksum checks out, but it's designed to provoke a buffer overrun um, in the kernel, um, you wanna actually run FSCK before you mount it. Uh, and so that's really out of scope for online scrub. That's sort of uh, a separable issue um, from the scrubbing where what we're talking about is uh, whether you are creating a snapshot and then running FSCK on the snapshot, which all the file systems can support, or XFS is you know on the brink of declaring fully supported, um, you know a kernel level FSCK um, that doesn't require the snapshot. Uh, I think is sort of you know that's separate. That's a separable question, and that's one where I think it is useful to get uh, you know, the distros and Leonard's um, opinions about when is that appropriate to do. Um, and you know, let's ignore the security question of you know, if we're running, if FSCK is running in kernel context, um, you know, how can we be sure that the you know, kernel online FSCK code you know, won't have buffer overruns because you know, it's C code and uh, I at least don't know how to write bug free C code, um, you know, off the top of my head. <laughs> so um, Derek, please mm -hmm. uh, give a quick overview for Leonard about your project and the questions that you wanna ask him. All right. Yeah, thanks Ted. That was a pretty good summar summarization or introduction. So Leonard, the thing I wanted to talk to you about ideally it would have been in person, was that for the past six years, we've been developing online FISC capabilities for XFS so that we can actually check file systems without having to unmount them. While originally this was so that you could spin up a long lived system, run it and then detect latent errors and software bugs and things like that. But as as we have discovered rather recently, a lot of a lot more distros than the zero I thought there were will actually let you mount XFS file systems without privilege. So that has in the last week or so coalesced into, hey, maybe we should actually try using some of these repair tools and ideally the online one in concert with whatever it is that's mount, mounting XFS file systems and leaving them mounted. But that also, brings up a whole bunch of interesting issues about things like how do we contain the driver program into a system D job? I have one of those. And how do we 
how do I actually interface with other parts of the system where other part, the other parts of the system are not necessarily defined or even exist at this point. So, uh, you yeah, know, one, one, thing, one thing we've also been building into XFS is the ability for it to notice when it encounters weird looking metadata or just outright bad metadata and actually set up flags. Um, a thing that we have not yet tied into are the FS notify events that I think EXD4 is now tied into such that when, pro when corruptions or lost data or whatever are detected, it can actually send a notification to user space along with some details of what went wrong. Ideally for XFS, we, since we generally know exactly what went wrong, we, can, we could encode that in whatever we send to user space in the hopes that if there's anybody listening, they can actually schedule appropriate actions, whether the appropriate actions are run, run FSCK, after unmounting for some file systems or running online FSCK so that we don't incur downtime or just unmounting the file system and saying, hey, this is bad, it went away, bye. But you know, fr from kernel land, I don't really have a good, a, a lot of good visibility into what does user space really want to do. This probably would make a reasonably good plumber's topic, but alas, here I am at LSF. So I was hoping to get your thoughts about, hey, what if along the lines of, hey, what if we uh, told you that there was a way to, to uh, check XFS file systems so that we don't have to do this scary thing where we mount some random thing that someone found in a parking lot and who knows what it does to the kernel. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, currently the way how UDISCs uh, and that stuff works, right? Like that they mount whatever you find and I find I always found that stupid and there are certain operating like Chrome OS or something who don't do this uh, which do not do this which uh, just do EFET and user space and things like that and I kind of tell the GNOME and UDISC people that that's probably what they should be doing as well right like having some user space implementation of EFET and then focus only on VFET because the use case they focus on is, is like USB sticks and people don't typically put XFS file systems on USB sticks right um, so, uh, for that case, I think that's the way out, right? And there's the other thing, uh, which is what my talk was about, which is that people want to be able to mount arbitrary file system images inside of containers. Um, for that, m the my story for trust was always something like DM Verity, and then we established trust before we pass anything to the kernel. Um, as I understand, then uh, at least TED for XT4 gives the guarantee that M MKFS, uh, sorry, FS check is uh, sufficient to establish trust um, for most cases. Um, is that the same for XFS? Well, would you say basically that if I run FS check dot XFS on an XFS file system that is trusted afterwards, that it cannot exploit the kernel, cannot trigger algorithmic DOS situations or anything like this? Well, I mean, that's the way a, I understand, uh, uh, it's a uh, good question uh, with a difficult vessel. answer because the, an, the instant I say yes, everybody in the world will launch their fuzzer rigs in order to try to find all of the places where the things that FSCK doesn't catch. In, in general, I think I would, I would tend to, I think I agree with Ted that in, it should work. Like it, this is this is what we should be doing. Saying that you know, beating on the repair tools until the until we're generally confident that if it passes, either either online or offline FISC, that probably the file system's good. I mean, I, I would, but it's not an absolute guarantee because hey, you know, I'm as like Ted, I'm not perfect at writing C code either. <laughs> so so I get the 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 signal then that probably it's fine with XT4 and XFS and probably not so much fine with ButterFS. But um, so you mentioned the online file system check a lot. Um, that's not useful for establishing trust, right? Like because it means that I first have to mount the stuff and then have to do the online file system check. That's not good enough, right? Like because then it's already might have exploited the kernel, right? But I understand, don't ins understand mm -hmm. the semantics of an online file system check to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing I don't know about the container images thing is 
Are we willing to trust that generally people won't be injecting malicious container images if they've been signed by whoever the distributor is? Or that's, that's the model. Like, uh, if if it's signed, it's good, right? Um, mm -hmm. But, All but right, the question is like what what uh, uh, Ted suggested. It's yeah. it's fine to even mount unsigned stuff as long as we do a file system check, an offline file system check in, in Ted's case. But in your case. You, you also have the online file system check, but that's not enough for establishing trust, as I understand, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my, my question is, if the image is signed by the distributor, then it do, does our interest in running FISC drop, to, dr drop back to where we just want to make sure the image is okay and that there weren't any bugs in the distributor's software? I mean, you know, yeah, we're, we're not signed, really looking it's signed, for malicious. It's, it's all good. By the way, like in the, in the right. stuff Can I that jump I in here? I actually do run FS check uh, beforehand um, if it's a file system matter. The model is uh, the model is generally, I think, if the if user space guarantees something and user space guarantees through signature or whatever that uh, this is fine to mount, then this is the level of trust that is sufficient for the container use case. It might still, be, of course, it might still be exploitable. It might have been tricked into signing something that is buggy and so on, but that's that's on user space. Like that's then not uh, the kernel's fault. The the main push that, yeah, m my main point had always been that the kernel can't be, or in most cases, can't be responsible for for establishing a policy of when to trust an image because the amount of use cases that we have in user space are probably too vast to be covered, and especially not generically across all file systems. So the mechanism that I proposed and asked uh, Lena to work on was the trust is established in user space through signature, the invarity that is key is in the kernel or whatever, and that's good enough uh, for mounting unprivileged um, file system. And a whole different story, I think, uh, is can an individual f file system with a block device format guarantee I'm safe to be, mount, um, be mounted by unprivileged users? And that question also comes in two different flavors. It, either it comes in the flavor um, I an un a privileged process can, for me, mount this image, like inject it into my uh, user namespace and mount namespace, or I can call, I can, as in the container manager, the container itself, the workload, payload, can call the mount tool within the container and mount that XFS file system. And uh, that second, that specific um, solution comes with a lot of caveats because then it means whoever mounted that image also owns the super block uh, because that's just currently how it works. We could probably change this, but in general, you own the super block, then you have access to all of the operations that belong to that super block uh, and you could destroy that file system, whatever. Like I think that's a, a way higher requirement for for trust at least how that, that's how i think about it hey guys i, I think we're thinking about this wrong I, I don't think fs check actually works for trusting the file system because uh, a malicious device can and will just uh change the device uh data underneath you it can return uh one set of data when fs check is running and return are, different data later there are at least uh, three strategies to attack that. Like the first one is uh, we make a copy for it. Um, the second one is we check that the, the yeah, client we... has enabled FS Verity on a thing. And the third one is um, the client has already enabled MemFT sealing and it's a MemFT um, thing. When so FS Verity, cases... when FS Verity is in use, then then yes. But I don't think we can rely on that in general. As file system implementer, we cannot rely on that in general. That won't work for you know, users mounting Im images on their desktop yes. or a, a user wanting to mount uh, an image in the cloud. Uh, if you're mounting a, a, something that's conceptually a network block device, you just can't. Yeah, uh, so I, I think it's, you're absolutely correct. And that's not relevant for the security you know, of, you know, whenever you do a security, answer a security question, you have to have a threat model and make assumptions about your environment. And you are absolutely correct 
that if you pick up a thumb drive off of a parking lot and you know it has what purports to be an ext4 or xfs file system but in fact is a malicious smart device that can return different values at different points in hey, time hey, Ted, nothing will save you right but i think what we're talking about here is the image is malicious we copy that image into a block device that we trust, and then we run FSCK on it, right? So it all yeah, depends I don't on think your we threat model force... and what, what you think is like Ted, a valid Ted, I don't attacker. think we can force, force the user to make that copy a part of their workflow. We uh, can't control the user workflow to that degree. Uh, I think the responsible thing to, uh, for us to be doing as file system implementer, implementers is to start taking a little bit more seriously just hardening our code at runtime. And I wanted to ask uh, Derek, uh, what, how, where XFS is in this state? From what I've seen of where XFS is with runtime verification, XFS does verification on metadata at both read and write time, as I understand it, same as bcachefs, and also fuzz testing. I think we might not be in as bad of shape as we assume. The thing that I think of it's generally been missing is maybe a uh, better code coverage analysis. I don't think anyone is doing that the way that we should. So just, yeah. to clarify, just to clarify this part of making it part of the workflow, it's not the user that does this. It's like the mount daemon that Leonard gave a presentation about before. So it's not under the user's control, it's, it's under the control of a privileged process on the system. Yeah, this is as soon as this becomes a generally accepted thing that you can do, people are going to want to use it in more and more contexts and contexts where that just copying the whole image is not an option. I think people are going to be wanting to mount images in the cloud untrusted very soon. Okay, I think we're getting off, off the rails here. Derek, Derek was asking user space specifically, how do you want to get what notifications are useful? how do we want to deal with there's something wrong and I know there's something wrong, like policy questions that user space needs to answer. And I think that's what we're looking for from Leonard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was the other half of what I wanted to know about is like, is so, what do we do about notifying user space and getting them to tell us, getting them to tell the XFS utilities to actually do something. So uh, I don't know what the right policy, like, I mean, I'm not a storage guy, right? Like, I don't know what storage people would like to have for policies. I can just tell you, like, uh, if I think about disk images, uh, usually the way I think that system co uh, systems should be composed these days is that you, like, every service is a stack of file system images and the host is a, a stack of file system images. So if any of these file system images actually triggers some kind of failure, uh, we should probably uh, localize it and then have like probably the smartest policy is to just shut down that specific service, right? Um, so uh, yeah, if you give me a notification about uh, some specific file system uh, uh, um, uh, uh, being bad, right? Like we could certainly easily hook that up so that the specific service goes down. So like similarly, like for example, we handle an OOM event from 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 uh, OMD or something like this, right? Like where we get the notification hmm, that service is misbehaving. Now we kill it. So it could also be, oh my God, the file system image that backs the service is bad, then we just kill it and create a reportable event. So that would make a ton of sense to me, but I don't really know what storage users really want because I'm not, a, not a, really a storage guy. Yeah, I suspect the people we need to talk to are the people who are actually running these services, right? So for example, um, what do the Kubernetes people want? Uh, that's who we should actually really talk to because they're the ones where if we can say, you know, the file system on this particular block device has gone inconsistent and it could be because of a hardware fault, it could be because of a kernel bug, then the Kubernetes people would want to shut down those jobs that are related to that particular device, possibly giving them a short grace period where the job can like tell the world, uh, I'm going away, goodbye cruel world, that sort of thing. But like, it's the people who are running, the, or who are maintaining those systems who will care. We added that support in ext4 specifically for my company's internal Kubernetes-like thing, i.e. Borg, and that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to shut down um, services when a file system 
became inconsistent. Um, and certainly what we did was good enough for that particular use case. Now, is it good enough for Kubernetes? We need to ask the Kubernetes folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, think things are a little bit different here working for a cough well-known database software vendor where most of our uses of XFS outside of root file systems are really large data partitions where we would like to be able to perform at least simple repairs on on the 100 terabyte data partition to keep try to keep the VM running because at any given time the thing that's running on on the VM or in the container or whatever is probably not accessing the entire 100 terabytes of data so we have some opportunity to actually like step in and fix the file system before the application software really notices and yeah, if they hit it, if they hit the broken part and the file system shuts down, then yeah, we have to kill the container. But we would at least like to try to, you know, build, grow new engines on the airplane while it's flying in order to avoid having to do an emergency landing. Because in our case, restoring a few hundred terabytes might actually take at least a noticeable amount of time to say nothing of the people who have, you know, 10 times that much data and restoring from backups is gonna take them a really long time. They would much rather we fixed things and not just throw everything away. Um, so one thing about the Kubernetes thing, and to my knowledge, like my understanding, all the container stuff is usually on a higher level, right? Like they unpack their tarballs and uh, hence, uh, if you get a file system failure event, basically the only option is to shut everything down and not anything individualized. This is different with the model we try to pursue with systemd where, where uh, services can be shipped in file system images, right? Like so that you can actually, if one of the file system images is bad, you can immediately direct like this very small set of services that are affected by this and then shut that down. But uh, so reg my, my question reg regarding this 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 uh, online file system check, like um, wouldn't it suffice that there would be a mount option that if a uh, XFS file system has some error detected that we like, why involve user space was then triggering an online file system check. Wouldn't it suffice to just tell right in advance, I want the policy that if XFS detects some failure, it immediately does an online file system check because it sounds a lot more robust to me than in, instead of expecting user space to come back and, and do this. I mean, what user space can, can is better in than XFS itself is uh, um, executing actions on something else such as shutting down relevant services. But uh, um, uh, just going back to the XFS file system and say, oh, please fix yourself, um, that's, that's just bullshit. Like, you can just do this yourself if policy says so. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I also don't really mind just writing an XFS daemon that sits around, waits for notifications, and, will and can immediately schedule online fisks or even wait for mount notifications and do it then. But I thought I, I, I needed to do at least enough... Uh, casting around for information before I actually just decide that that's the way we're going to go. I mean, it, as it is to touch on something that Kent was asking about, we we do actually have a fairly comprehensive XFS fuzz test suite where we use the, the abilities of the XFS debugger to walk every single field of every metadata object in the entire file system and fuzz them. So part of the reason why the XFS QA test suite takes almost a week to run is that we are a lot of that time is spent letting the fuzzing tests walk through every single metadata object to go see does the repair tool actually detect that this thing has been changed underneath underneath us without anybody noticing and can it actually fix it whether it's online or offline like i don't know that e2 fisk actually has that capability i mean i think i I kind of dimly recall years ago, I did add some ability to FS tests to actually fuzz ext4 metadata blocks and see if e 2 fisk will actually at least detect obvious corruptions. But I don't know if it, I, I don't think I ever got to the level of precision that XFS has where we can do things like change an inode, change a directory entry inode number by one and see if, it, if repair actually notices that. Anyways, uh, it's two minutes past four, so I should probably yield to Kent. But so thanks everybody for showing up and giving me myriad inputs. <laughs>